Go Chairplane. Ready? Okay. Give me a K. K. I got your K. I got your K. Give me an I. I. I got your I. I got your I. Give me an N. N. I got your N. I got your N. Give me a D. D. I got your D. I got your D. Give me an N. N. I got your N. I got your N. Give me an E. E. I got your E. I got your E. Give me an F. F. I got your S. I got your S. Another F. S. I got your S. I got your S. What does it spell? Kindness. One more time. Kindness. Go, Chaplin. Let's go. Woo! Hello, Cheryl Bland, and welcome back for another exciting lesson. How many of you participate in sports or have a favorite team? Perhaps a favorite basketball team, maybe local or NBA, a softball or baseball team, maybe soccer, track, dance, or maybe a cheering squad, or how about a favorite Football team, roll tight for their 18th national championship. Woo! Now that is something to cheer about. So why do we cheer for our favorite teams? Yes, because we want them to win. We feel like when we're doing that extra cheer and rooting them on, we're giving them extra energy to score those extra points or to prevent the other team from scoring. We even buy t-shirts and jerseys and perhaps decorate our rooms or even purchase shoes that are sponsored by our favorite player or our favorite team. And why do we do all of that? Because we're super fans, yes. We're super fans and we cheer for our team because we love to see them win. But last week, we learned that we not only need to cheer for our teams, that we individually, as people of God, we need super fans also. We need someone in our corner to cheer us on when we're feeling down or when things aren't going as well as we planned or had hoped them to. We want people to, or need people to be our super fans, to celebrate with us when things are going good. And even just to have someone to be nice and show kindness just because they care. But the other amazing thing is that not only do we need super fans, we have the opportunity to be super fans for someone else. God demonstrated this for us. By give, but he was our biggest super fan by giving us Jesus. He gave us Jesus so that we can share the love of Jesus with others. So this week or this month, we're studying kindness. And kindness is defined as this. Kindness, showing others they are valuable by how you treat them. Kindness. Kindness is the fruit of the Spirit, and when we show kindness to others, we give them a glimpse into the heart of God and show them how much God loves them. Kindness should be a characteristic of God's people, and we should demonstrate it every day as stated in our memory verse. Let's take a look. Echo buttons on. You are God's chosen people. You are holy and dearly loved. So put on tender mercy and kindness as if they were your clothes. Don't be proud. Be gentle and patient. Colossians chapter 3 verse 12. This scripture tells us to put on kindness every day as if they were our clothes so that everyone that we meet can experience the love of God. We find more instructions on kindness in the book of Ephesians Chapter 4, verse 32, which reads, Be kind and tender to one another. Forgive one another just as God forgave you because of what Jesus has done. This brings us to our lesson for today. It's taken from a story uh, from a book from the Old Testament 
that happened way, way, way back in time. But yet, it has very important lessons for us to learn today. As a matter of fact, this story is about family showing kindness to one another. And if we're truly honest, sometimes it can be challenging to show kindness to our family and friends. Maybe because our little sister or our brothers or our cousins or even our friends may do things that frustrate us and we may feel like we'll have another opportunity to make it up to them. Versus if it's a stranger, we tend to always want to be on our best behavior. But today, in this lesson, we're going to see why it's important to show love and kindness to those who are closest to us. So are you ready? Let's prepare our hearts and our minds. Let's take a seat and let's get ready for our lesson for today. The title of our story for today is Family Ties and it's taken from the book of Ruth, which is found in the Old Testament. It's actually the eighth book of the Bible, right before, or actually after Judges, and right before Samuel. The family in our story today consists of a husband, a wife, two sons, and their wives. It takes place in the city of Judah during the time which there was a famine, which meant there was very little food in the land. So, Naomi, who was the wife and her family, decided to move to Moab so that they could have more food. Unfortunately, while they were there, Naomi's husband died. Her sons were able to marry too, were able to get married and they had wives, but unfortunately, about 10 years after being in Moab, they also died. So Naomi was left with just her daughter-in-laws. After some time passed, Naomi learned that God had blessed the city of Judah again and the famine was over and there was food in the land again. So Naomi decided that she would go back to her homeland of Judah. Her daughters-in-laws, Naomi and Ophir, decided that they would go with her also. But Naomi told them no. She actually encouraged them to go back to their homeland because since she was up in age, she was elderly now. She was not going to be able to bear more sons for them, for them to get married. And they were still young ladies. So she encouraged them to go back to their families. And one of her daughter-in-laws, Ophir, decided that she would go back to her family. So she agreed to do what Naomi asked her. But Ruth, on the other hand, she decided to stay with Naomi. And she told her that where she go, she would go. And where she decided to live, she would live. And that Naomi's God would be her God. So even as much as Naomi tried to persuade Ruth to leave her, Ruth was persistent and she decided that she was going to go back to Judah with Ruth. And this is an example of Ruth showing kindness to her mother-in-law. She could have decided since she was young that she would go back to be with her family and maybe marry again, but she loved her mother-in-law and she was committed to staying with her so that she would not be alone. So the two of them traveled to back to Judah. And when they arrived, the family there, Naomi's family recognized her and they were so excited to see her. And they said, Naomi, you're back. We're so excited, how have you been? But Naomi shared with them that she was very sorrowful because she had lost her husband as well as her two sons. But they encouraged her that since she was home, that they were going to help her get back on her feet and that things were going to be okay. So she had a place to stay, but she still, and even though her family and the, her neighbors in the city provided them food for a while, she knew that they could not continue to support them 
always. So Ruth stepped up to the plate and she said to her mother-in-law, Naomi, I'm young and I'm healthy and I'm willing to go work for us to get some food. Please let me go out to glean in the fields to get grain. So Naomi agreed and Ruth went out to the fields. And during this time, there was a law that God had established for the owners of the fields to leave leftover grain for the poor to come by and just pick up leftovers so that they would have something to eat. And so as it would be, Naomi went out to glean in a field and she was picking up grain just like the other harvesters were. And a young man, well actually the owner of the field, noticed her and he asked his servants, who is this young lady working in my field? And one of the servants replied, she is the daughter of Naomi and she's been coming here daily and she works very hard and she very rarely takes a break. So, the owner of the field, who just happens to be a very wealthy man, was also a relative of Naomi's father-in-law, who was, well, Ruth's father-in-law, who was Naomi's husband. And so, he went over to meet her, and he introduced himself. And she was a little afraid because she was a foreigner in the land, but he encouraged her. I know who you are. You are the daughter-in-law of Naomi. And I've heard of the kindness that you've shown to her. How you left your family and came here with Naomi to take care of her. And so I'm going to show kindness to you as well. So he invited her to come to his home for food to eat. And he also told the young men not to harass her, to let her just take as much as she needed. And so, not only did she get more leftover, he even cooked a meal for her to let her come into his home and eat, and then gave her enough to carry back home to Naomi. Wow, what an example of kindness. This brings us to a couple of our bottom line statements. Number one, be kinder than you have to be. It would have been very easy for Boaz, which was the name of the owner of the field, to just let Naomi pick up leftovers like the other harvesters. But instead, he wanted to show extra kindness to her. Boaz saw the kindness that Ruth was showing to her family, and he wanted to do something kind for her. For her. This brings us to our bottom line number two. Be kind to your family and friends. Ruth continued to work for Boaz until the end of the grain harvest. Naomi knew that God had a special plan to rescue their family. So she gave Ruth some special instructions and told her to go see Boaz at night and to ask him to marry her to protect their family. So, Boaz agreed, and he and Ruth were married. Wow, so much kindness in this story. Ruth showed kindness to Naomi so that she would not be alone as she moved to be with her family and her people in a new city. Boaz shows kindness to Naomi because she showed kindness to her mother-in-law. And this is just a sweet ending to a beautiful story of kindness. It shows us how when we show how God can use us to show kindness to our family and bring blessings to everyone that's involved. So that's why we have to be super fans for each other and know that we can be super fans for other people who come into our lives. Because when we show kindness, we are showing God's love to others. So don't forget, show kindness this week. What is kindness? 
is showing others how valuable they are. I did not forget about our praise and worship song. I saved it for the very end. So let's get ready up and on your feet. Let's remember to show kindness and to always show love to one another. So are you ready? Up and on your feet. Let's do our praise and worship. Go Cherubland, let's go. Yeah.